Hey guys, I'm Bobsy, and in my Discord server I was asked how you carry objects over the network, so this is sort of a video on following up on that. So I just have these three different objects all set up the same, as, as you can see on the network I can go around and I can carry these objects. I go to my main player here, you can see I can do the exact same, and this will be networked properly to everyone. So let's get right into it. One thing that's important to mention is I just use a very basic multiplayer setup which I already have a video about, so if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and take a look. So first things first, one thing at a time. Uh, I've set up this uh, empty game object transform, which is just called world objects. As you can see, I have three pickup objects inside of it, which just have a box collide and a rigid body and is a network object. The network object is used so we can send information about the object over the network. We'll get to that later. The net, the world objects, uh, empty game object is tagged with world objects. And the pickup objects have a layer on them for a layer pickup, which you can simply just add a new one up. Now let's go set up the new script. I'm just gonna set up a new script that I'm gonna call player pickup guide for my sake. So on our player, let's add the player pickup script that we just made and let's open it up. Now, first of all, let's set up this project as a network behavior script, as I've shown you guys in previous tutorials. If you don't know about this, go have a look at my first tutorial on multiplayer. Now, as per usual, we wanna do use the public override void on start client. And then here we want to check if we are not the owner, if base dot is not the owner, we want to disable the script so we can do enable to false. Then there's a few variables that we want to know beforehand. First of all, we want to have a reference to the camera and I'm just going to call it cam. We also want to know whether we have an object in our hand already. We also want to know what object we have in hand. So I'm just going to call that object in hand. And we also want a reference to the uh, world objects transform. So I'm just going to call this world object holder. So first of all, let me set world object holder equals to game object dot find game object with tag. And I call the world objects. And then let me set the camera reference to be equals to my camera dot main, because that's how my setup does it. If you are not using camera dot main, you can simply reference your camera in any other way. It's just important that we know the camera. Oh, and of course I need the transform. Now let's set up our update loop. So first of all, we want to check if we are pressing our pickup button. So let's set that up. So I'm going to use serialized field instead of making them public because I don't need them public. And I'm going to set a key code for the pickup button. And I'm just going to set that as standard to key code .e. And now we're going to use if input .get key down pickup button. And then we want to run some sort of function. So let's make a new function that we just called pickup. And this function just runs when we press the button. Now in this pickup, we want to run the raycast. So we want to check what the camera is looking at. So I'm going to use a physics raycast, physics.raycast. If you don't know about those, the Unity documentation on this is decent. And we want to raycast from the camera that transform that position. And we want to uh, do it in the direction of the camera that transform that forward, which means it's the direction that we're looking. Now we want to output a raycast hit that we're just going to call hit. And then we need to know some kind of raycast distance. So this is our pickup distance. And then we want to know the layer that we want to pick up from, which if you recall early on, that was what the pickup object is on. So let's set this up as well. So I'm going to do another serialized field of a float that we're going to call raycast distance. And another serialized field of a layer mask, which I'm going to call pickup layer. And now we can use these two in the so I can do the raycast distance and the pickup layer. And in here we would then want to check. So we've got to think if we're not holding an object in our hand, well we just gotta pick up the object. If we do hold the object in our hand, uh, we want to drop that previous object. So what we can do in here is we can first of all check if we do not have an object in hand. Then we do one thing and then else if we do have an object in hand we want to do another thing. So, but we'll get to the dropping part later. Let's now just focus on picking up something. So this is where the networking part actually comes in. So pretty much all of this setup could work in single player just fine. But now we, we've got to use a server RPC. If you don't know about RPCs or remote procedure calls, you should go look at my tutorial on those. But for now, we're going to make a server RPC that has require ownership equals false. It means that we can modify this even if we don't have ownership. I typically just pretty much always write this unless I want to utilize ownership for something. And I'm just going to call this uh, set object in hand server. So we know that it's the server. And then we want to make a observers RPC that we're gonna to reference to to actually make this happen on everybody's screen. 
that's going to be called set object in hand observer. Now we want to know a few things in here. First of all, we want to know what object that we've hit. So I'm going to do a game object object. We also want to know the position and the rotation of where we want to place it. So I'm going to do a vector three position and a quaternion for rotation. And then of course we want to know what player should be the parent of the object, you know, what player is picking it up. Like so. And I'm going to have all these requirements in here as well. And then we can just from the server manager, we can just call set object and hand observer from here and we can give it all the variables like so. Now, where do we get these position, this position and rotation from? Well, actually on the player, I've already set this up. If you go have a look at my player here, you can see that I actually have set up a pickup position, which is just a bit in front of him and to the right. So this is basically where I want the cube and the direction I want to point it in. So I can change the direction that I want it to point in, but I just want it forward. So if we go into the script, we want to be able to reference this as well. So I'm going to serialize field, a new transform, which is going to be the pickup position. Like so, and so now we can actually call it from within the ray car. So now we want to call this set object in hand server like so and we want to give it all the data so first of all we want to give it the object that we're hitting which is the hit.transform.game object we want to give it the the pickup position dot position and the pickup position dot rotation and then we want to give it our own player which is just our game object like so so now we're perfectly fine calling all the way through so we're calling to the server and the server is calling it to all observers now keep in mind that for observers to work it's important that your player has the observer component on it network observer now, what do we want to do once we call this? Now we have all this data through. Well, first of all, we want to set the position of the object to the position that we sent through. And we want to do the same for the rotation. Now, we also want to set its transform to the player. This is why we're sending our player through. And now, since I also have rigid bodies on them, I also want to set the rigid body to kinematic if there is a rigid body. So first of all, we've got to check if object.get component rigid body does not equal to null. Well, then we want to set the rigid body to kinematic like so now after we call this it's now important that we know what object that we have in hand so we're going to take our object in hand equals to our hit.transform.gameobject and we also want to set the bool that we have an object in our hand now we could technically also instead of having the bool we could technically just uh, check if the object in hand is null or not but I like to do it this way better. I think it explains it a little bit better. Now let's go test this first part, shall we? So before we can probably test it, we got to set up the values. So I want the ray cars distance of two. I want the pickup layer to be the layer that I call pickup. And I want the pickup position to be the position that I've set in here as a child on the player. Now let's go back out here and let's try. As you can see, now I can pick it up. And as you can see, it doesn't work to pick up anything else because I already have something in my hand. So now I need a way to drop whatever I have in my hand. So let's go do that. So first things first, we also want a drop button. So I'm just gonna copy paste this line and I'm gonna say drop button and I'm gonna make that Q instead. And now down here in the update, we can pretty much do the exact same thing. If input.get key down, drop button, and we wanna run a drop command. So let's make that now. So void drop stop, and we can call this drop from in here. Like so, first thing that we gotta do is we gotta check that we have something in our hand. So if has object in hand, and then we can say if we don't have an object in hand, we just want to return. This means that we're just going to leave the function immediately. So now everything we write here, we, we are sure that we have something in our hand. Now we've got to do pretty much the same server RPC and observers RPC setup again. So let's do that. And I'm going to call this drop object server. And for this, we need to know what object it is that we're dropping, which is the object that we have in our hand. And we want to know the transform of the world object. And now we do the same, but with an observer. And now as we called it earlier, we're just gonna do that again and feed it the exact same data that we just set up. And now we can make sure that we call this drop object server in here. And here we give it the object in hand and we give it the world object folder. Like so, and now we just gotta make what happens when we actually drop it. So first of all, the object.transform.parent should be equals to the world objects that we've set in here. And then once again, we can make a check to check if it does have a rigid body. We can pretty much just copy it from here. Say that if it does have a rigid body, we want to set it to kinematic to false again. So now we're actually able to drop it again. And now we can also make sure that if we have an object in hand, we just drop it first. And then we actually do the exact same as up here. 
And it's also important that in the drop functionality, of course, we make sure to set the as object in hand to false and the object in hand, we set it to null, like so. And this should basically just work. So now I'm gonna go out and I'm just gonna make sure everything is set up on the player. As we can see, everything is set up properly on the player. I'm gonna try and build the project and let's test it. So I'm gonna connect as a client here. As you can see, I can move around now. I can pick things up in my hand. I can, when I try and pick something else up, I drop what I just had in my hand. There we go. And it also works perfectly fine with the guy who's the server. So I hope this was at least somewhat helpful to you. I know this is a very sort of specific topic, but I think it gives you a good idea of how you can work with remote procedure calls properly and how you can hopefully structure things nicely so it works how you expect it to. So uh, yeah, please do let me know if this was helpful to you. And uh, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.